Photos straight from a billboard. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to take ordinary photographs and take them to that next visual level. Hi everyone, today we're gonna to take a look at local adjustments because if you really want to have your photos pop and stand out, the local adjustments are something that definitely need to be a part of your editing process. And whether that's you just want to make your photo look better, you want to put a specific, uh, say, attention or visual appeal to a specific aspect of your photo, draw a viewer's attention to some part, or just make it pop a bit more, then local adjustments are definitely something that will do that. And in short, a way to put it is that local adjustments are what makes the difference between an ordinary photo and a really, really good photo. Let's go take a look. Alrighty, I've got a photo of a car right here in raw format, ready to go in our develop module. It's a good idea to do local adjustments in raw because JPEGs, they'll work as well, but we cannot pull out the most of them and especially of the dynamic range options that on the contrary, raw files do offer. And I chose a car to demonstrate local adjustments, but of course you can use this method on any type of photo, whether that's portraits, landscapes, um, or even, for example, if you're photographing products for a particular brand. There's really no limits when it comes to creativity. First, let's make some basic exposure adjustments. And so these don't take up much of our time. Let's speed up things just a little bit. And here's what the photo looks like in its basic form. You might say that it's almost ready to export and you might consider this photo finished, but on the contrary, I wanna get the most out of this photo and it's, a, it's going to serve as a great example to use in this video. And the car doesn't stand out the way that I believe uh, this kind of car deserves. So let's take a look at how we can bring the car into the foreground and just draw the viewer's attention more onto it. So first let's focus on the sky or say the sky versus the ground. I'd like to make the sky, which is almost overexposed, just a bit darker and bring out some of the cloud detail. And then I wanna brighten up the ground so the car doesn't blend into the shadows in the background as much. Let's start with the sky and let's use a gradient filter, which we can also select using the G key. And we're gonna drag it across the sky like so, so that the blue mask ends right above where the horizon ends. And let's slightly lower the exposure and add contrast just to accentuate the clouds. And since the clouds on the right are just a little bit too blue and draw a lot of attention, let's use the color shift for this. Let's select blue and then lower the saturation and increase the luminance. Now I don't have to create a new mask for the ground. Let's just copy the one from the sky and invert it. Then all we have to do is undo the adjustments because they were copied with the mask and make new adjustments for the ground. Again, let's pull up exposure and increase the shadows a little bit. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna focus on the car itself. I want to bring it more into the foreground and have people pay more attention to it. Let's use the filter brush, which you can also select using the B key. Let's change the brush diameter and select the car in its entirety. Now I'm gonna start with the edges and then select the middle of the car. And if we accidentally go outside of the lines, it's not a big deal. Let's just go to remove from the mask and then remove it. And once the selection is complete, let's increase exposure and contrast, decrease the shadows, and then increase lights to maximize the contrast even more. Now let's lower the whites just to get rid of the overexposed areas and reduce the blacks as well. Next, with the filter brush off, let's check how the car is looking now versus uh, before we started editing. And remember to add some clarity just to make sure the car's features are a bit sharper and also lower texture to make the car's paint a little bit smoother, like it just came out of the body shop and stand out even a bit more than Dardia does. Since the car has blue reflections from the sky, I think it's a good idea to get rid of those. So let's scroll down to color shift, select blue, and lower the saturation and just play around a bit with the luminance. 
Okay, that looks good. I mean, as far as the car is concerned, I think that looks like it just came out of a paint job. So I think we'll leave it at that. Now let's look at some of the more grandiose details. When we look at the front of the car, it looks quite dark and these grills here aren't visible at all. So let's click add mask and select only the darker part of the car's front. Let's also increase shadows, and that's to make sure that we don't lose any contrast from here. Let's lower the blacks as well. And to make each grill stand out, let's increase lights and whites. And again, we can add some clarity. Okay, and that looks just about right for the front of our vehicle. Okay, again, let's take a peek at how the car looked like before we started editing. All right, next, let's focus on the headlights, which have a lot of glare, and they don't show enough of the inside details. So let's select each headlight separately because each has a different level of brightness, and we'd have to compromise if we adjusted the exposure uh, and apply that to both of them at the same time, which we don't wanna do. If both were the same, then I could select them both in the same mask, and it would make our job a lot easier, but that's not the case with this one. All right, let's use the filter brush and select each headlight separately. Let's start by adjusting the left one. Let's lower the exposure, lights, as well as whites to get rid of any overexposed areas. Let's reduce the blacks to maximize contrast. And again, let's add a bit of clarity to bring out the different features of the headlight and increase the texture a tiny bit. Let's do the exact same thing on the second headlight, but this time reduce the shadows. All right, that works. And I think it's starting to look pretty good. So next let's focus on the windshield, which looks just a bit too bright and let's use the brush to select it. Let's lower the lights and shadows and lower the exposure a bit. Whoops, we just overdid it a bit and this looks a bit unnatural. So let's bump up the exposure and lights just a bit. Okay, finally, let's also slightly lower texture. And that's it. I don't think the car needs any more attention. And of course, several mini adjustments could be made, but we're gonna move on. All right, first let's duplicate the first mask, which is also the car selection and invert it to have everything selected except for the car. And let's remove the adjustments. There's some greenery here in the left part of the photo. So I'm gonna select green in the color shift and reduce the saturation. And I could do the same with the yellow, which is in here in the barrier behind the car because it doesn't really fit the composition at all. But I'm not gonna do that just because I think in this particular example, it just adds a little bit of a spice. It's kind of a little interesting feature. And if you can do something to make our photo stand out just a little bit from the plethora of images you might've already seen in this style, it's a plus. All right, next let's lower the saturation for the entire background. And the car stands out nicely in this picture, but I think we can bring even more attention to the car since it is the main subject. Let's use a radial filter and let's use it to select the car and some of the areas around it. and then increase the gradient width to make the transition a lot smoother. And let's duplicate and invert this mask. Next, let's take the outer duplicated mask and slightly lower the exposure and add contrast. Let's slightly increase the shadows, lower blacks and lower the clarity.
And for that inner mask, I'm going to slightly add some more exposure as well as contrast and also some dehaze just to give the photo a very sort of subtle spotlight effect, if you will. Okay, let's go back to the outer mask and reduce dehaze to make the background blurry. And now we can see that the sort of spotlight effect we were going for isn't as pronounced as we might have wanted it. So I'm gonna select the outer mask once again and reduce exposure just a bit more. Okay, I'm happy with these adjustments. So let's click on this icon or press and hold the semicolon to see how the photo looked like before and after our editing. And now you can see how the photo looks before and after applying each mask. So let's click on export. And we're done. Now, if you wanted, there's also a lot more magic that we could do with other adjustments, like adding fog or lights, but I have to switch for the editor module for those. And it's not something that we're gonna really cover today. Let's focus on it some other time. I hope you guys like this video. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Give us some feedback so we have an idea of what we might uh, make for you in the future. Otherwise, hit that bell, give us a like, and we hope to see you in the next video. And until next time, take care and have a good one.